Dyla. He's going to be a, a main a main player for Dyla. There's a very good chance he could go down to Bolton now that Lennon's there. Um, That's a question. Would you allow him to go down to Bolton? Would you break, let me let, let me phrase it differently? Would you break the bank to keep Chris Commons? No, no, no way would I break the bank. Would I like to keep him? Yes, um, because he's got those goals in his locker, and because although we we won quite handsomely at the weekend, I know how bad we can look, and he can be the man that will make a difference between drawing or winning or losing and drawing. Um, would I go out my way to to give the guy a contract that's going to ensure he stays at Celtic? No, because I don't think he's worth what our top wage would be. I think you could spend that better elsewhere. Yeah, Louis, do you agree with that? Yeah, he, he kind of. Yeah, I do. I do agree with it. It kind of reminds me of. This might sound a bit daft, but you know how when you have like a club captain. And yeah. the club captain, still the club captain, but he's kind of getting towards the end of his of his career. He's maybe not playing every game, but he's still the club captain. And he's he's big for the club publicly, and uh, he puts his face about. And it would be difficult to imagine him not there. But he's possibly not best for the team. That's kind of how I feel about Commons. Like he's a great man to have off the pit, off the pitch, and. He's obviously one of the kind of figureheads of the dressing room, but at the same time, when it actually gets down to the football, he doesn't quite do it enough. When he does do something, it's fantastic, but it'd be difficult to carry that long Do you, do you think giving him a contract where he has a part-time coaching role, w- would he be happy to maybe play less? At 31, well, he's, he's got another four or five years, because he's, he's never had pace anyway. Yeah. He's, he's going to have five years in him to play football. I, th- I think I think he will end up going down to Bolton. I, I think Lennon had already he'd already been muted for a for a coaching role, um, and I, I'd brought this up before in a previous podcast, and we'd talked about it, and I think it was maybe you, Chris, that had said that that was probably more of a Lennon move than a Celtic move, and I would agree, Lennon. Obviously likes him and and thinks thinks he can bring something to his staff, and I wouldn't be surprised. I think he'll probably stick around for a while yet, because obviously his wife loves Celtic, and I think they're very settled here. But I would imagine the last year of his playing career, he'll get to wherever Lennon is, probably still at Bolton, um, and he'll go into the coaching alongside Lennon. Yeah, um, the Commons one, I just don't think we're not, we're going to know how it's going to play until. He signs a new deal, or he signs for someone else. Uh, I, I would personally, I would wouldn't be too bothered if he left. When's his deal run out? Sorry, well, he can sign in January, can't January. Oh. So he can sign a pre-contract with January. We could still get a small fee from him. Um, he's no Stephen Pearson. Um, Guidetti thoughts. He's put the two thumbs up. I've got two thumbs up here. Two thumbs up. He has to, he, we have to do everything we can to sign him. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't think we will. I, I think he will be playing for a mid-table Premiership team next season. I disagree. I think Guidetti will do well this season for us, but not well enough to have the shooters banging the door down. I think next season he's going to be absolutely phenomenal. It's going to be like Larson's first season when he has 16 goals, made a very telling contribution, but he wasn't the superstar he was. Um, I reckon he'll do very well for us, but he won't set the header alight. We're not in the Champions League either, so we're not. He's not going to be in a short window. I reckon we'll sign him, and I think next season we're going to be like, wow. We're going to be like, wow. Listen, that sounds terrific. I, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I, th- I thought his pass for McGregor's goal, if it was indeed a pass or whether he was shooting, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was top quality. I, I, I think he did mean to pass it. I think watching it. Watching it back, he didn't look up, which was the thing that impressed me most. And that he, I, I, I think he knew, whether he knew that McGregor was there or not, he thought, I'm too wide to shoot. Well, I'm, get, I'm, get, I'm getting this ball as close to that penalty spot as I can. And if nobody's there, nobody's there. Do you also maybe think there's a thing where the way they've been do, working in training, maybe 
that that late run in because Celtic, you know, for years like with Petrov and even like I know Hartley didn't play that role, but he started to play that role. Then with Ledley, who started to use it a little bit um, of that late run into the box, you know, hopefully there, there'll, there'll be a mindset where that's something you know because we've been training in a certain way. He knew that if he put the ball there, that someone would be running onto it. Uh, I I agree, but I also think that. Remember, he's not been here for very long, so he's I, been here I for like, a month and a half. I know, like to, I, I like to think, and I and I and I thought at the time that it was his just his Instinct. game intelligence. He thought I just need to get the ball into that box, and that's what I liked. I liked the fact that he wasn't trying to. I mean, he could very easily have taken that ball into his feet stopped like Stokes so often does and, and kind of turned around and dwelled on the ball mm. but rather he, he thought get the ball into the box try and create something and that was right after his own goal Yeah. so I mean he'd, he he kind of showed what he can do in, in more ways than one I, I thought he was I thought he was really good first half but then a lot of the Celtic players were I think he's what you were touching on there, Louis, I think he's a very intelligent player and I think he's only going to get sharper um, as he gets fitter because obviously he's not played um, a lot of football over the last few years. Um, so I, I'm genuinely excited to see this guy develop with us. Yeah. Um, another couple of things that you see is we dig at the French. Ah, the celebration. Uh, uh, that's terrific. And then he's um, rapping when uh, Virgil was beatboxing. That was cringe, well, they don't yeah. know if you've seen that. Uh, it, was, it was pretty cringy. <laughs> yeah, it made me pretty sad. But, you know, you take the rough with a smooth, the yin with a yang. Celtic had 63% possession in that game, um, which is pretty huge. 12 shots, six of them on target. So we had an article up um, from Seth Dobson um, about luck in terms of shots on target and... If you actually look at the stats, it shows that Dyla, in terms of creating chances and shots on goal, is one of the best, you know, we've had, you know, in the last kind of four or five managers we've had. Maybe it is just luck, um, because, I mean, a lot of luck comes down to a lot of it in football, but I, I'm very positive, but I'm also fearful that the next match we could just completely capitulate and just fall apart again. Do you have that fear yourself, Chris? Yep, um, Definitely. Um, and I don't think I saw that article and and I think it did make a lot of good points because if you look at the uh, for for instance the Hamilton game, the bottom line is we, we get beat one nil um, and that's the end of the story basically. But the amount of chances we created in that game was absolutely unreal. In terms of chances created, I w- probably created more, or you know, or the same, or whatever against as we did against Ross County, but we didn't. We weren't clinical. We didn't take chances. Take those. Just take those chances. The players have looked so temperamental all season that it could go that. It could go the other way. I think the fact that we got the goal quite early on Saturday made a huge difference. Yeah. I think if that happens, you know, a lot of the times we will put a few past teams, but. You, you, there is every chance that we could go the same way that we have been in the next few games. It's, it's just it's a worry. Dyla's going to need to get that consistency before we're going to believe that we're turned a corner. Uh, I, I I agree, but I possibly a wee bit more optimistic. I think um, I think we really have. It's hard to sound sensible when it's one game. Yeah, but. I think with what we talked about about Lustig coming back, a better balance in the team, um, less injuries, um, and and players having the confidence. I think confidence is is mm. so important, and we've been lacking it. If a five 0 win and a really good performance can't change that for players after having a week away with our countries, then what more can you do to a certain extent? But um, just very quickly, and you you were saying about the article we had up on the site. Um, before about the kind of shots per game and, and stuff like that. Um, the same guy, Toby, Seth. Seth. We we all love creating. That's what I tweet you sent a tweeted out today, which I found really interesting. Um, we all love Craig Gordon, but did you know um, at Celtic he has, or did you know that Celtic have the worst, the second worst save percentage in the league so far? 
with seven goals conceded from only 19 shots on target. So it kind of suggests to me... Gordon. <laughs> suggests Get Gordon to fuck. <laughs> Although it's an interesting stat, it kind of shows that you can't always go by stats. No, you know I, I mean? I, I, because I, there's no way that you could think that... It needs to be a balance. Other than yeah. the fact that Craig Gordon has been Stats fantastic. don't tell the, the whole story, but they also give an insight that maybe you yeah. would get from just watching it alone. Um, but I just want to go, kind of go back to what was said about... Actually, no, I'll go with this before, sorry. Brian Murray tweeted in, who does Skepovic have to blow to get a pass slash through ball? Three times he was ignored on Saturday, one of which would have been a tapping. People seem to have made their mind up about Skepovic already, and how many, how long has he played for? What's his... That, that, this is what happens, though. This seems to be a thing that's developed over the past few, few years, and I don't know if it's because we have had disappointments, but I feel as if... Celtic players are already judged before they come in the door. Um, he didn't want to sign for us, so he's an arsehole and he's got a bad attitude. I, I mean, Gadetti, Gadetti seemed to be almost have the cult kind of image before he even kicked a ball. So he has came on, he had a slow start first couple of games. Fair enough, he, he's he's doing well now. But it seems as if Skepovic has been written off before he kicked a ball and he's in that kind of malaise where he he just can't quite Stop get out it. of it. And and we've seen it with Pookie, Baldi, Baricta, all these players. And I'm not saying that uh, that was kind of the sporter's fault, not the, their own kind of failings. But at the same time, I kind of feel as if he's already getting into that category. And I don't like it. Yeah, he needs have signed him. You know? He needs a goal. Um, I think you won't be able to judge him what he does until, until he gets that goal because... Even Gary, remember Hartson took us several games when he signed for Celtic. We're going to get to slag him soon. Yeah, right. He he took several games to, to to get his first goal, and I think sometimes that happens. If he gets that goal soon, you know we might see him kick on. Um, people, as you said, Louis, I do think people have prejudged them after the whole transfer day deadline drama sort of thing. I'm completely I imagine the same as you. I've got no idea what he's like. I'm. I'm I'm not going to judge him until I see him play a handful of games and see what he can do for us. Um, my mind's still completely open with a guy, um, but I do I do think he needs to get a goal. I know he's not had much game time, but if he gets if he can get hit the ground a wee bit, you know, faster, get get himself off the mark, people might be prepared to give him a chance. It's, it's not great when you see Celtic putting um, kind of recent signings into the development squad to get a game during the week and then they tweet about it constantly the fact that the guy scored against 17 year old kids that worries me did he not score was, did he score on international duty I don't think he was away in international duty because he was in the, with the development team do you know what he scored for the development team that's what right. I read that's what well, the, the point I'll make about Skepovic though is uh, he looks different I know we've not seen a lot of him but he looks like a different type of player and that could obviously fall in his favour because he's not like Godetti and he's not like Stokes well, see the I said this to my mate who was watching the game in the pub um, in the first half Izagiri was uh, uh, kind of showing glimpses of his best getting forward anyway and, and putting really good balls into the box fair enough they were a bit close to the keeper and the one, no one was on the end of them but I said to him at the time I was like that is the type of play and the type of crossing that Skepovic is made for Yeah, and I don't know a lot about the guy but you can tell that he likes to be in the box he's a big guy and judging by the, the kind of the YouTube uh, highlights I've seen of him at uh, Sporting Gihong I think if if he was in there Trying to get on the end of some of those crosses, I think he would. He would, and he's a different, as you say, he's a different option. There's no other player really in that team. I don't think Gidetti. I think Gidetti could probably get a couple of headed goals to his name, but I think Skepovic is that type of man. Yeah. Uh, when he signed, I think that's the first thing that came into my mind. He's, uh, what a goal! Sorry, we just uh, the Sessegnon scored an absolute crack for for West Brom. Anyway, Chris, can I? Um, I think that was Dyla's idea. You know, a, a big guy who can get in the box, good aerial prowess because he's going to have wide players that are going to get the ball into the box. So, I think that was in his mindset that, that, that that's what he'd signed him for. But 
you, you know, we don't seem to be getting players wide and getting a lot of crosses in. Maybe that'll change now. The fullbacks will be a bit more settled. Yeah. Um, and I think y- y- you're spot on. If we're going to start doing that, if our delivery's going to get better, we're going to get people up. Skipovic could be the guy to bury these chances. 